Hello folks, Ariel over here at Finance where today I wanted to show you another example because folks have been asking about this, about what I do with some of the wild foraged foods that I have around here in the spring. Start by not dropping your eggshells into your eggs. Um, this could be a breakfast. I am not a big breakfast fan so I would make this more as a brunch personally. But I am going to start out with eggs here. And this is pretty quick. I'm going to melt just a little bit of butter in that pan, beat these eggs up. Eggs, of course, are high in a whole lot of good proteins, and your egg source uh, determines a lot of how much nutrition is in there, depending on what the chicken was eating and so on. There could be a pretty huge variation when they're tested. So I'm just going to beat those just a little bit. And then what we're putting in here is all kinds of wild things, uh, except the tomatoes are not wild. So this pile is dandelion greens, just the leaves. Um, I'm just going to chop them up just a little bit like any other green thing here. They're going to shrink the minute I put them in, on the heat. But the dandelion leaves are best when they're fairly young and fresh plants. They're a little more tender and a little less bitter in the spring than they will be later on in the year. You can still eat them. The whole dandelion plant is edible. Roots, flowers, leaves, but they uh, they just get a little more of a strong, tougher, bitter taste as they get older, like a lot of other things. Um, so we're just going to put those in there. This, well, I can put my tomatoes in. It was just a few cherry tomatoes I cut in half that I had left from something else. Um, this pile is nettle, so I do not want to touch this actually with my hands. I use gloves when I picked it, just like when I made tea. Um, I'm not going to use the very bottom end there where the stems are a little thicker. And because I don't want to touch it till it's cooked, because if you are not familiar with nettle, it's, uh, it's called stinging nettle for a reason. If you touch it with your bare skin while it is raw, it will um, give you a very unpleasant stinging sensation for a while. That goes away once it is cooked. So putting that in there, and then what I have right here are, there's only two actually, but morel mushrooms. I wasn't even mushroom hunting yesterday. I was actually just going for a walk with Burley, but I found two. So I'm going to put them in here. What they've been soaking in is just a little bit of water with salt because the morel mushroom, we'll see if the camera can show it there, has the stem is kind of hollow. It makes a, a perfect little place for sometimes little bugs to hide. So if you soak it in a little salt water, um, that, that will kill or um, get rid of any little bugs that may have decided to just crawl up in there as a hiding spot. And again, of course, if you're going to pick wild mushrooms, make sure you do know what you're picking because there are, of course, poisonous kinds of, of mushrooms. So I'm just going to chop these up just a little bit. Morels, by the way, are one of my absolute favorite mushrooms, um, though I like, I think, every kind of mushroom I've tried eating. So you can see how the greens are rapidly shrinking up there, and wilting, and the mushrooms don't have to cook long, and neither do the tomatoes. They just kind of want to make them warm. And then you could make this like an omelet, similar to the salmon and mushroom omelet I had done not too long ago, um, but I'm just going to make more of a scramble here. I want to make sure all my nettles are good and wilted there. They, I said in the other day when I made tea that I don't think they taste like a whole lot of anything. This tastes kind of like a green leaf. They don't have a strong flavor. Dandelions do have a strong flavor. They're a little bit bitter. Most of the bitter greens are highly nutritious. And if you eat just a whole bowl of dandelion greens, that would probably be pretty strong. Um, but mixed with other things, I do not find that unpleasant at all. And I'm just going to pour my eggs right in here on top of all of that. Spread them out. And we're going to let that cook. And add just a little bit of salt. I'm not a pepper fan, but if you like pepper, you could certainly add that. And then the last thing here that we're going to put on top are, if you can 
see these. Those are violet flowers. Now some are violet colored and some are yellow. Both grow wild here in my yard, which is where these were picked from, and are also edible. They also don't have a strong flavor. It's just a light flowery um, taste. You can even make jellies out, uh, out of them. I have some friends who have done that. I have not personally done that. I just don't eat a whole lot of jelly myself. But um, we're going to put them on top of our egg pile here when it's done. You can start to see the, the edges cooking a little bit. So this is just going to be a scramble with everything mixed in together here as it cooks. Oh, and I, a friend was going out of town and gave me a little chunk of some brie cheese they had left, so I'm going to put just a little bit of that in here, though I don't eat a whole lot of dairy. I do enjoy the, the flavor of that in there sometimes. Just make some chunks and let it kind of melt in with the eggs. And just going to take a sec because eggs tend to cook better on a low heat than really high. And that's going to be done really shortly. Let me grab a plate to put that on. So I just want to encourage you all to learn about the wild things growing for free outside of your doors. And instead of spending time and money to poison them, um, use them for something useful. There's actually a great website I found the other day called eattheinvaders.com, I believe, um, that even describes useful things to do with some very invasive weeds that we don't necessarily want, but why not eat them instead of uh, just poisoning them? I thought it was a really creative name. You might enjoy checking that out. And here we go. I can tell our eggs are almost done. It's kind of a pretty scramble. And in one second, I'm going to take that off the heat. There we go. And it's already pretty with the green and red and brown mushrooms in there. And now we're just going to serve our violet and yellow violet flowers on top. And here is what our meal looks like. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.